Hey, what's up? I'm Tim from Rise Against, and you're watching the Kerrang! Podcast. Kerrang! Hello and welcome to the Kerrang! Podcast, day one at the Running Festival. Joining me is Tim from Rise Against. How are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, so, you're gearing up for your main stage performance. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you get nervous at things like this, or is it just, you know, another gig? You know, I, I've, I've known this gig, and we've always played the lockup stage, and so right. that's the gig I know. And so... This is a new gig. They usually don't even let me on the main stage. Right. You know what I mean? They usually the security guards usually say, "No, no, no, go back to your lockup stage." Right. <laughs> and um, and so this is this will be a new experience for playing on the stage and for um, for uh, th this size audience here, ready and leads, because we're used to the, the sweaty little tent off in the yeah. corner, you know, with all our friends. And so this will be um, a little bit different. So, but I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think that that's sort of one of like this band was sort of born and thrived in environments where there was always a challenge, you know what I mean? It was a challenge to open up for Agnostic Front 2003 in front of a bunch of fans that want to kill you, you know what I mean? It was a challenge to come to the UK for the first time with Sick of It All and fans that just see you as an obstacle between them and Sick of It All and they just want to throw a beer at you all night. And so we have always thrived on that challenge. I mean, it was, it was that, sort of, that, that sort of hunger, you know what I mean? And so um, shows like this where I know we're out in front of a lot of new faces, that challenge comes back and it makes it Sort of fun and exciting again. Cool. Yeah. Um, three quarters of the band are vegan. How do uh, vegetarian. You, uh, vegetarian. Yeah. How do you how do you cope with sort of festival uh, foods? Is it uh, is it easy to? It's actually these uh, if these festivals are pretty easy. Like they're they're pretty accommodating. Right. You know what I mean? I think that I don't know if it's just that music more musicians are vegetarian, mm -hmm. but um, they always almost always have like a pretty good a pretty good vegetarian option yeah. for what, you. What about Germany though? Because they're famed for uh, meat. Right. Right. Saying. Yeah. Yeah. Germany is a little a little harder to do sometimes. The, like and luckily you know we're at a point where we can like if we have a catering company we can say yo we don't eat meat and so they'll go out of their way and they'll try to find some way for us to eat. But just walking around. You sort of looked at like, wait, you don't eat meat. You know, then what do you eat? Yeah. <laughs> um, Endgame has been out for about six months now. Um, yeah. What's been your highlight since its release? Ooh. Um, have you been pleased with the reception? Yeah, well? I have been. I've been really proud of like the two videos we made off the record. Yeah. You know, help is on the way, and also make it stop September's children. I've been really proud of like those videos. Um, the way it's been received too has been it's been awesome you know like I think the, the fans are really uh, embracing the songs um, and I think we managed to reach some new people on this record as well and I'm and I'm and I'm really proud of how intense the record is like lyrically there's still a lot of important stuff being said um, and uh, but yeah it's been it's been a fun six months some highlights would probably include like opening up for Rage Against the Machine and Muse in LA last month oh, yeah. at the Coliseum like 60,000 people, just madness. Um, doing some of the fests here, you know, being here today, you know, it's, it's a lot of good shit. Yeah, um, you, on uh, Rise Against uh, official site, you're giving away Make It Stop as a free download. Yeah. At the moment. Could you, because we haven't had a chance to discuss this on the podcast, but could you give us a little bit of background on the, uh, the actual song? Oh yeah, sure. Um, Make It Stop, September's Children, it's, it's a Rise Against song that was created as a way to address very broadly like the culture of homophobia that can exist in the bigger rock scene yeah. you know I think that there are there are some dark corners where homophobia still is hiding more effectively than other places I think that's like in hip hop in a lot of the sports world and I think in like the male dominated testosterone driven rock world out there you know what I mean I think that it's, it's, just, it's the same way that like you know country bands don't aren't aren't usually anti-war you know what I mean I wouldn't write an anti-war song rock bands don't talk about this you know what I mean why do you think that is I don't know what it is I think, I think it is because it's so like a testosterone driven like real like bro kind of genre you know yeah. um, and I, and Rise Against came out of you know the punk and hardcore world and I think that we get sort of thrown into the rock world a lot and what I found was that getting thrown into the rock world people have this sort of blanket assumptions about your band and I found people that were like unsure about where Rise Against stood on issues of homophobia or gay rights and that kind of thing and I, and I, and I found it so frustrating that, there, that people had any doubt in their mind that a band like Rise Against would be anything but you know completely pro-gay rights and you know and I want nothing to do with homophobia and homophobic culture and so that's when I realized we should do a song you know we should do a song that to like address this um, once and for all and and what, even though I had that idea, I didn't have like the device in which I would create that song. And it was the catalyst was um, 
the uh, a wave of gay teen suicides in the states in September of 2010. While we were in the studio, actually, it was happening, and just sort of opening the paper and reading this, it was like all these kids, one after another, are killing themselves at ages as young as 13. You know, deciding that they have no future. You know, and that's when I was like, okay, I'm gonna write a song. We're going to focus on these kids to try to to try to create a much bigger message that will hopefully hit people. Um, then you teamed up with the It Gets Better uh, campaign. Uh, the it Gets Better project, the, yeah. Yeah, for the video that accompanied the song. I think, yeah, I think the, when that wave of gay teen suicides uh, hit across the states, it hit a lot of people the same way. And I think that it hit us the same way that it hit Dan Savage and the It Gets Better project, where it was like, I, they, they saw what was happening. They said, something needs to be done. And what and we wrote a song, but what they did was like create something that went viral and huge and involved people from all over the world, you know, and and uh, and such an important message too, because it was basically reaching back to their adolescence and saying, hey, my adolescence was shitty too, you know what I mean? Like people tormented me and harassed me for for being gay or they thought I was gay, but. What seems like the end of the world now is not. When you get out of high school, you know, you're gonna realize that that asshole who was saying stuff to you, like, you're never gonna see him again in your whole life. You know what I mean? It's not gonna matter. You know, like, there's a world outside waiting for you. You know, and so that, what an amazing project. It snowballed from there. And whether people were gay or just bullied or just wanted to let you know, like, it does get better. You know, it's an important message to, 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 to communicate to to the, the, the world of, of teenagers out there because I remember my like, high school experience, like that was the end of the world. Every little thing, if a girl broke up with you, it was the end of the world. You know what I mean? If, a, if, a, if somebody harassed you in the hallway, it was the end of the world, you know? But you, know, you, you move on and you realize that's just a small little slice of my life. Have you had any kind of first time experience where fans come up to you and said that that particular song gave them strength? Or yeah, actually we have, and that's been really cool, and like, sort of, I didn't really expect it, but it was really rad to get emails and communication from um, this whole sort of group of uh, this, this gay community that have been in the Rise Against world for a long time, and unsure where they fit into it, reaching out and saying, thanks for writing that song. It lets me know that, it lets me know where you stand on it, it lets me know that I belong in the Rise Against community, and, I, and it lets me know that the Rise Against fans are also cool. You know? That's great. Um, you mentioned Rage Against the Machine earlier. Uh, you're back in November uh, for the UK tour, and yeah. Morello's uh, joining you. Yeah, um, the How does it feel to you know, look, you know, to share a bill with Tom, and you know, just be on the road with him for a while? It's awesome. You know, to be sharing a stage with legends like that. You know what I mean? Like I was probably 16 when I first saw Rage Against the Machine at the Aragon Ballroom. You know, and right in the front row watching this band that's been so important to my generation and um, you know Tom himself is such a uh, an incredible musician and activist and just a really just a smart motherfucker you know what I mean yeah, just yeah. like and so um, it's been as our band's gotten bigger you know what I mean I've found myself sometimes thinking that we're like we're blazing this trail and a, a political punk band you know what I mean but then I look back and I realize no this trail has been you know blazed before I just need to look for the bands that did it, you know? And bands like Rage Against Machine did it. You know, even bands like The Clash did it, you know? And so, someone like Tom is someone that I can sort of look to and say, like, hey man, what did you guys do when you hit this? You know, what did you do like when this radio festival got pissed at you and didn't want you to play? You know, what did you do? And like, so it's been great to sort of uh, learn from that, because he's already been there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rage was already this really politically confrontational band that was doing amazing amazing work and so I can learn from from what they've done brilliant well thanks uh, Tim uh, yeah we look forward to you coming back and uh, have a great day today look forward to coming Thank back you. Here.